what you'll see throughout chapters 14, 15, and 16 are chapters on equilibria. There are two main categories of calculations. There are calculations in which you know the K, and that's the case here. We know the K. And you're wanting to know something about the system at equilibrium. In this question, we want to know the total pressure inside that container at equilibrium. The other set of problems are you know something about the system and you're trying to obtain K. So we're, um, we're in this former situation where we know K and want to know something about equilibrium. Now what we want to know about the equilibria is the total pressure in the vessel. Because I want to work in the pressure world and they're asking about the total pressure, I have decided to go ahead and obtain a KP value instead of working in KC. Now you can work the whole problem with KC instead and then at the end convert your concentrations of gases to pressures, but I've chosen to go this route. Now KC was given to me at 0.015 and the R is 0.08206 and that's liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. That reminds me that temperature better be in Kelvin. It's 500 degrees Celsius. If we add 273 to that, we'll have 773 Kelvin. These two quantities have got to be multiplied and then raised to delta N. And delta N is, we have one mole of gas here. We have two moles of gas here, so one minus two is a negative one. This gives me a Kp equal to the value of 2.4 times 10 to the minus so now I'm going to work in pressures. If I look at the balanced equation, which is given there, I know that Kp is equal to the pressure of B over the pressure of A squared. And I'm going to go ahead and um, write my reaction so I can have an ICE table underneath it. I've got 2A, and it's a gas going to be, if I do an ICE table, I need to put initial quantities in there in terms of pressure in atmospheres, since I'm working in the pressure world. And they gave me the moles of the two substances, they gave me the volume of the container, and they gave me the temperature. So for both of those gases, I can, to come up with the initial amounts, I can use PV equals NRT. So the initial pressure of A would be equal to its moles, 0 0.21, the R value, and the temperature, which again is 773, and I just ran out of room, but just know that I'm putting a K down. And that is going to be divided, it's PV equals NRT, so I'm bringing the volume over here, and that was four liters. And this is going to be initial pressure of A is given as 3.33 atmospheres. Do the same thing for B, but I put in 1.41 moles And again, the 773 Kelvin, and divide by the 4 liters. That's going to be initial value for the pressure of B as 22.4 atmospheres. So then I'm going to come over to my ICE table that I have going right here, and I am going to plug in the initial concentration of those two substances. So we have 3.33, and I have 22.4. Now most students just take off and start putting a minus 2x and plus x over here, but let's think about which way this reaction really should shift. It's got a Kp value that's very small, and at equilibrium we should have way more A than we have B. Well, we're starting with way more B than we have A if you look at these amounts. So I'm going to assume it's going to travel to the left. Now if you don't do this and you just put, uh, sorry, and then we'll use up some of this and produce some of that. If you get the signs backwards here, it will work out when you solve for x um, that your x, the only x that makes sense is a negative x, and it, which 
turns it around for you. But I like to um, think about which way it's going to shift. Sometimes you'll know, sometimes you won't. So at equilibrium, we'll have 3.33 plus 2x, and we'll have 22.4 minus x. Now we set up this expression so that we can plug these values into our KB expression and end up solving for x. So we have that 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 is equal to, well, it's pressure of B, which is 22.4 minus x, over the pressure of A squared, which would be 3.33 plus 2x quantity squared. Now we've got to do a little work. We've got to combine our terms and uh, get it into a quadratic. And so I'm going to do a little work. I'll just quietly write here what I need to do. I need to bring uh, the denominator up to the numerator. And um, that is going to give me, wrong page, let me see here. I want to uh, keep my 2.24 times 10 to the minus x, I need 22.4 minus x, and I'm going to bring this up to this side, so that'd be 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 times this denominator. Now this denominator is this quantity squared, so I'm going to do FOIL method. I'm going to take 3.33 and I'm going to square it and that's going to be 11.1. I'm going to take this times this and double it and that is going to give me 13.3x and I'm going to take the last term and square it and that's going to be 4x squared. Okay, so so far I've got uh, the two sides everything on the same level at least anyway. Then I'm going to multiply this 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 and I need to distribute it throughout that area here and that's going to give me the following. If I can keep from writing where I shouldn't. 22.4 minus x is still the left side and that is going to equal to just multiplying this to each of those terms. So 2.7 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 3.2 times 10 to the minus 3x plus 9.6 times 10 to the minus 4x squared. Okay, let's turn to the next page and what we're going to do on the next page is I'm going to combine my terms. So my x needs to be combined with this x. My 22.4 which has no x term, needs to be combined with this. And I want to get it into the form 0 equals, that's a 0, um, ax squared plus bx plus c. And then I can use a quadratic equation. Okay, combining the terms and putting it all over to the left-hand side of the equation, uh, right hand side of the equation, I have 0 equals 9.6 times 10 to the minus 4 x squared plus 1.003 x minus 22.4. Now I can use the quadratic to solve for x. We know the quadratic equation is x is equal to a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where this is a, this is b, and this is c, and it's a negative 22.4. So we plug those values in. Now this is kind of a lengthy process. Some of you have calculators that will, if you just plug in a, b, and c, will give you a value for your x, the two possible values. I went ahead and did the whole process as I worked through this problem so that you can see each of the pieces, okay? We don't want to uh, lose that minus sign, it's a negative 22.4 all over, I'm missing pieces, I'm so sorry here, 
negative 1.003 all over 2 times a. When we multiply this out and do all the mathematics that it represents, what we will obtain is two values for x. One of the values will be, I don't know what this mark is here, let's get rid of it. One of these values will be um, 21.9. The other value is going to be one, a negative 1067. Now we won't automatically ignore it because it's negative because we could have put our x's and which side we add to and which side we subtract from on the wrong side. But let's think about these two numbers. Let's go back to our what sits right here. Would it make sense for x to be a negative 1067? Well, if it was a negative 1067 and I plugged it in here and doubled it, we would end up with an equilibrium concentration of A that's a negative value. And that's what's always going to be the case is one of those two X's makes no sense because you end up with no, um, z less than zero of one of your reactants or products. Now the other number was 21.9. Let's make sure that makes sense. If we took 21.9 away from 22.4, we would still have some B. So it's shifting to the left and not consuming all of it. So of these numbers, this one makes sense. So then we can come up with actual values for this, but let's think why. Whenever we solve for X, it's tempting to stop because you've done a lot of work. But you have to look at what the question is asking, and we'll go back up here and see what that question is asking. It is asking us to determine the total pressure in the vessel. The total pressure in the vessel would be the pressure of A plus the pressure of B. That's what the Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure says, so let's write that, that down. The total pressure would be the pressure of A at equilibrium plus the pressure of B at equilibrium. So if we go to that table, we can determine that the pressure of A should be 3.33 plus 2 times our X value, which is 21.9. And that's going to give us a pressure of A of 47.1 atmospheres. The pressure of B, once again, you look at the equilibrium expression table, I mean our table, and at B, we had the pressure of B would be 22.4 minus x, and our x was um, 21.9. So this is going to give us a value of 0 0.5. Now we can plug these values in and get a total pressure. 47.1 plus 0 0.5 is going to give us a value of 47.6, and these were all in atmospheres.